Uh, hi, Dominic. Thank you very much for taking the time out to speak with us today. Pleasure. You just uh, finished your keynote on Definity. Uh, how was it? Well, how was your keynote? What do you feel about the conference, the vibe, the people, the crowd? Just comment on that would be great. I mean, it's a great vibe. It's great to see so many blockchain enthusiasts you know, in, in one place. And I think it's a very positive sign of the times. Um, uh, looking out in the crowd, you know, I think, um, I'm not sure how many people had heard of Definity before. Um, you know, there's definitely different tracks within blockchain. You know, there's a Silicon Valley track and there's an Asian track. And, um, they don't necessarily mix quite as much as they should. Um, so, you know, the awareness about affinity is much greater in Silicon Valley than it is here. So it was you know, definitely good to introduce it to a new audience. Um, there's a kind of throng of people coming uh, up afterwards. So I guess people were receptive and interested. Yeah, you were swamped by people. It took me like 15 minutes to get you for this interview. So I feel you. And uh, could you, in a, in a really in a summarized fashion, could you tell us what is Definity all about really quickly? Yeah, so uh, Definity is creating this thing called the Internet Computer. And uh, essentially, we are extending the Internet so that the Internet itself can host uh, software systems and data, right? So the Internet, of course, is a decentralized network. It was designed so communications could continue in the event of nuclear war. And uh, what this meant was you couldn't have a single controlling um, you know, router, right? Or a, con or a single controlling organization that somehow had to support this network. And it was built using an open protocol. And what that meant was that anybody could connect and the internet scaled out very rapidly. And people were very keen to connect to the internet and build on it because they knew it was per permissionless. And, and by contrast, you know, if you wanted to add a service with, within AOL, you know, America Online's private network back in the mid-90s, or CompuServe's private network, or British Telecom proposed this thing called the Information Superhighway, and they were lobbying the government um, that the internet would be very dangerous and that actually everyone in Britain should have this Information Superhighway and they would, um, you know, um, sort of create this walled garden and, and um, decide, you know, who could... Um, create services and content within it. Um, now, people weren't too keen on those models, and the internet provided an open platform that allowed anyone to connect without permission, and that's why it grew so spectacularly. However, um, the job isn't quite finished because uh, you know, the hosting of data, software and data on, on the internet is very, very centralized. In fact, you know, it, it takes place in a handful of mega hosting centers run by people like Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud. So it's not very robust. I mean, someone could fly airplanes into those things and, and the whole internet would go quiet. Um, but moreover, you know, it's just not the right model. We need an open model um, where the internet itself can host software and data. And that's what we're trying to do with the internet computer. But it's also a little bit more than that too because we are rethinking how software systems should be developed and hosted. So we're trying to create a model that allows software systems to be created with far, at a far lower cost. Most of the cost in the development of software and IT infrastructure is involved in the human capital. It's the, the existing technology stack is vastly overcomplicated and this ties people up in tasks that they shouldn't need to be doing, right? Um, you know, sort of 95% plus of the work involved in developing a software system is related to making different components work together and issues that are really separate from the, the actual software logic, the business logic that needs to be run. And we, we want to fix that so that we reduce the cost for people wanting to produce IT infrastructure and services. But at the same time, we also want to ensure that these, this, you know, the next generation of software systems and internet services uh, are much more secure. So, of course, Definity is a blockchain, essentially, a you know, super fast, super scalable blockchain. And so, you know, we want the, the next generation of software systems and internet services to run on a hack-proof platform and be inherently much more secure than traditional systems are today. We want them to be massively more available. We don't want, you know, we want the internet computer to provide guarantees about the availability of systems and data. But we don't think that's a job for developers. We think that um, there should be mechanisms for systems to preserve the privacy of user data. Because, you know, 
what we're doing is saying, on the one hand, look, you know, take your private IT system, like you know, your product inventory tracking system, your HR system, your e-commerce system, and run it on the internet computer, which is a public network. Right? So you have to have like crypto lockbox mechanisms that allow data to be kept private. And also, you know, there are many internet services that also need to keep data private. We also want different systems built on top of the internet computer to be very highly interoperable. Um, and, and so it goes on. Yeah. So you mentioned that the internet uh, is pretty centralized uh, while you were just answering my question. And then you mentioned Definity. It, it's, uh, it's built with speed and scalability in mind. Uh, a lot of people say that today's blockchains can achieve two out of three of these things properly. What are your views on that statement? Uh, I think there's a lot of nonsense talk by um, people in, in the industry who don't really understand. And look, um, I always say to people, uh, the best way to understand uh, a project is to look at its team and to look at the backgrounds of the team members. You know, have they been super senior people at places like, you know, Google, Intel, Microsoft? Um, what are their research contributions? Not just what papers have they published, but what ground-breaking, world-changing new technologies have they created? What new cryptography they take, have they created that you know the world's adopted? Um, what new virtual machine have they created? Right? Yeah. And that's the best way to understand whether a project is making real claims or not. Um, the, the actual analysis of what's possible um, within a decentralized network is extraordinarily complex, right? So uh, I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm a pretty technical guy. You know, I, undergraduate level many years ago, I run lots and lots of prizes in computer science. It took me, um, in 2014, uh, f four months, I was studying traditional Byzantine fault tolerant consensus protocols, trying to repurpose them for the decentralized network setting. Um, I actually went in a different direction, but it took me four months just to understand that branch of distributed computing in any depth. Um, you know, if you want to be uh, a serious cryptographer, you're, you're talking about years and years and years of, um, you know, study being involved, right? Um, so. It's very difficult to um, talk in sound bites about the actual underlying uh, technical underpinnings of, of these projects meaningfully. But I would say that you know, uh, if you want to understand any project and whether it's real or not, you know, look at the investors, right? I mean, there are well-known technology investors who've been responsible for backing you know, enormous internet giants who are very good at evaluating teams and, te and technologies. Look at the investors, look at the team members involved, look at their backgrounds. And it's not enough just to say PhD or this or that. Look, look and see what you know, revolutionary new technologies they've created themselves in, in their career. That, that will tell you, um, you know, much more about um, uh, the Definity and any other project than I can say. I see, so, you're, so for, to answer that question, you think all three are Speed, scalability, and decentralization, all three would, would fit into Definity's model. Sure. I see. And um, I mean, just, just, just for reference, I mean, the test network is producing finality over the public internet um, in a couple of seconds. And it's, you know, a pretty big network. It's just, you know, hundreds, hundreds of computers around, around the, located around the world. Um, we would run thousands of computers, but it's pretty expensive. <laughs> um, for a test net, uh, and uh, I, I personally don't believe that these things are incompatible. All right. Now, uh, oh, okay. So my next question is: so um, it's mentioned that Definity is the sister network to Ethereum. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? I think it's become something more more different. So I think there was a time when uh, we were aiming to make Definity compatible. And, but, but as time's gone on, it's, it's apparent they're, they're really different things. I mean, the Definity project loves the Ethereum project. Um, there would be no Definity without Ethereum. And you know, a lot of the initial funding uh, for Definity came from the Ethereum community. So, you know, and I know many you know, people in the Ethereum community, and, um, but it's a different, different project. You know, Ethereum ultimately is more experimental. It's a smart contract platform. Um, Definity is you know, sort of laser focused 
on hosting the next generation of software and services. And that's all it's designed to do. It's a new platform for, for building software systems and for building internet services. And you know, that's a, there's an absolute laser focus on that and what the product market fit is and delivering um, you know, the features and capabilities we need. Um, and, and also, of course, you know, there are some differences in philosophy. So you could look at um, Ethereum being a little bit more cypherpunk. It doesn't have a governance system. It has the code as law, for example. Divinity has an algorithmic governance system called the blockchain nervous system. And this thing is, if you like, almost omnipotent within the network. It can do anything it likes. So this is almost like a polar, polar opposite. You know, if you build on the blockchain, if you build on, sorry, Divinity, you know, you, everything you're building is subject to the blockchain nervous system. So that's, you know, a, you know, a difference in, in, in philosophy, too. Thank you. And uh, that's very insightful information for our viewers. Thank you very much for that. Now, my last question would be, um, it's a little bit of a different question, but I, 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 I would like to ask you this. In 10 years from now, what, would, what will the world remember this period in the blockchain, uh, I, whatever you want to call it, the revolution or the blockchain? Uh, what, what will the world remember blockchain for 10 years from now? So, um, in your opinion. So I think you know, people will see with hindsight that the real battle now is uh, for layer one. Um, the history of technology teaches us that there will be enormous consolidation. There aren't going to be hundreds of blockchains, even though uh, you know, right now hundreds of blockchains are getting funded. Um, so you know, I, I believe that there will be sort of you know, a handful of very large uh, blockchains. And that's certainly true uh, as it pertains to computation. You know, if the Definity Network launches with massively superior speed, unlimited capacity, an amazing model for developing new software. Um, governance, uh, which some people I think will find out they prefer. Um, why, if you're wanting to build a production system, would you build on another network, right? So, you know, Definity orientates uh, everything it does around this view. You know, we're scaling out the project as fast as we can. We're hiring the world's best talent. And, you know, we look at it like we have one shot. We have one shot to produce the internet computer that, you know, becomes cloud 3.0. And certainly if we succeed, you know, uh, there will be consolidation, right? And once that happens, the community will move from the layer one battle to the layer two battle. And the, the layer two battle will involve people trying to create the internet services of tomorrow, right? Um, and at the moment, it's just not possible because none of the platforms, in fact, can really support it. Like, there's lots of pretenders out there saying that, you know, that their networks are capable of supporting this or that. But the reason, the, this is clearly not true because none of the things people are trying to build on top ever get, get significant traction. The platforms aren't ready. Um, and we think, um, you know, it's a race to produce a platform that really meets people's needs. Whoever produces uh, the, the, the first platform that really needs, meets people's needs um, will experience enormous growth and drive consolidation. And then, you know, we'll move to the services running on top of those, you know, base platforms. And so at the moment, I think, you know, it's, it's a sort of crazy free-for-all. There are hundreds of blockchains. Um, there are hundreds of uh, services being built on top of blockchains, funded by you know, investor money, even before it's sure that those platforms people are building on um, will be around for very long. Right? So I think it's, you know, it's, a, it's a wonderful time because there's so much creativity um, and you know, there's so much innovation and enthusiasm. It's certainly the case that the market is going to consolidate very, very dramatically. And I think it's going to kind of um, focus people's minds and attention will move to the next phase, which is using the working platforms that we all have to actually really change the world by building the next generation of things like internet services or reinventing corporate IT, for example. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know much about Definity before we just spoke. Uh, I still don't know too much about it, but I'm definitely going to be following your progress. Thank you. Um, and you're right, this is a great time to be in the blockchain space. Thank you very much for your time, Dominic. Pleasure. Thanks a lot.